Ghost. Say it to you, there's little Ghost Raiders here. We got mail. Santee, will you do one on sleeping gear and bedrolls of the Old West? Adam Rowe. Yeah, we can do that. I'm gonna make you a cup. I guess it's no wonder to any of you that people have been sleeping on the ground since the dawn of time. Pretty sure there were no feather beds in the Paleolithic era. <laughs> really? You're a genius. Oh yeah. For soldiers, the bedroll was an essential part of their kit since an army was frequently bivouacked in tents and sleeping on the ground. It was actually referred to as a blanket roll, or simply bedding, early on. The term bedroll didn't appear until later in the period. So, who else slept on the ground? Trappers, travelers, hunters, cowboys, and prospectors, to name a few. Keep in mind that there wasn't a Motel 6 every few miles, so unless you found an inn or a friendly homestead, you were gonna use that bedroll. Dave Rogers, who I've collaborated with many times, introduced me to some actual guidebooks from the era which detail what travelers should bring with them and how those items should be organized. The general idea was to put some small necessities in the blanket, then roll the whole thing up and carry it on your person or behind the saddle on your trusty steed. Stallion, baby! In 1876, John Keats Lord wrote, It's Keast. Keast. Keats was a poet. It is Keast. Oh, sorry. Uh, John Keats Lord wrote, in the shape of bedding, a couple of blankets carried under the saddle, a buffalo robe rolled up in a piece of stout hide and tied behind the saddle cantle ought to suffice for a week or two if roughing it. A fully loaded blanket roll weighs around 10 pounds, which is doable for a traveler on foot. On an emigrant train or trail drive, a more complete roll of bedding was carried in wagons or on pack mules. This could include pillows, quilts, and extra blankets. Contrary to popular belief, the entire family sleeping in the wagon at night is highly unlikely. Hey, I'm trying to sleep here. With supplies and furnishings for their new life on the frontier, there was not much room for sleeping. I'm sure space could be made, but simply unrolling bedding underneath the wagon was suggested and practiced. In the morning, the whole thing was rolled up and thrown in the back and off they went to the drive through at McDonald's. Okay, that's, that's not true. Sorry. Shut up! The best blankets were made of wool, which was more water resistant and holds up to 80% heat when wet. Cotton, linen, and blends were cheaper, but fell short of what 100% wool could do. Trade blankets were also point blankets. There were stitched lines on an edge called points that revealed the size so it would not have to be removed from the stack until purchase. Since travelers would likely experience rain at some point, a rubberized or painted canvas could be rolled up and carried as well. During the Civil War, this was a blanket with a slit cut in the middle for your head to go through. Our Spanish-speaking neighbors coined the term poncho, which is what this utilitarian garment was. Later in the period, a talma, or slicker, could be wrapped around the bedding and secured behind the saddle. Trekkers, bushcrafters, and all sorts of outdoorsmen today still practice the skills of our frontiersmen. I urge you all to check out Dave Rogers' blog entry on this subject. He gives some fascinating details that stem from tireless research and, more importantly, field experience. Link in the description field below. Hey Dan, how you doing? Hey Sam D. So did you bring it? Of course I did. Cool, cool, cool. Swiss rolls, just like you asked for. Well, I didn't say Swiss rolls, I said bed rolls. So it's bed rolls. No, 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 no. You sent me a text message that said bring Swiss rolls, I so I brought Swiss rolls. I typed bed rolls, Dan. Bed rolls. There's no Swiss rolls in the old west. I mean, <laughs> we can check. See right here in my phone. Oh, look. The hairy kid, ain't he? Cute? He is cute, yeah. Um, says right here, Dan, bring Swiss rolls. Motto correct. Well, anyway, thanks for bringing them. I appreciate it. These will be tasty for later. Whoa, 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 whoa. A little cash over, Bubba. Well, I thought you they were giving get, them to me. They don't them give me. these away. I don't give them away either. I don't have any cash to give you for it, so. Oh, so this is one of those things you're going to pay me later, like the checks in the mail and stuff like that? Yeah. I'm not thinking I'm going to go for that. Uh, Folks, thanks for watching. Wait, wait, Please wait, wait. What? Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. Oh, come on. That's not even fair, man. You didn't even give me a chance to
didn't say a package. I said you can have one. <laughs> There's two in a two in a pack. I can go and just cut it open and split it. I mean, what is? I didn't know they came in two in a pack. <laughs> Speaking of dirty dog, is this what I you thought, find in your backyard? 